Hi friends, in this video, I'll explain you how we can sequence the jobs in organization. With the help of Johnson's rule, we can solve this problem. We can sequence the jobs. There are varieties of combinations like N jobs, two machines, N jobs, one machine, N jobs, three machine, etc. Today, I'm going to discuss N jobs, two machine case. So let's start to understand how we can solve, how we can sequence the N jobs on two machines with the help of Johnson's rule. So I'm taking one question here to make you understand this type of problem. So here you can see we are given with five jobs which we have to perform on two machines and their respective processing time on both the machines are given. With the help of this, we need to find the optimal sequence of the jobs then alleged time of the all five jobs, idle time on machine A and idle time on machine B. Apart from that, in the slide, one more thing is written that is passing is not allowed. So passing is not allowed meaning is, as you can see in the table, we are given first machine as machine A. So that means we have to process job or whatever sequence we will decide we have to process those jobs firstly on machine a and then they will pass on machine b so that is the meaning of passing is not allowed now we'll go and we'll see the solution how we can solve this particular problem so to solve the sequencing of the jobs firstly we need to make a grid as there are five jobs so we are making the grid of one by five and then as the first machine is machine A, so we will keep machine A at the left hand side and the second machine that is machine B at the right hand side. Afterwards, we will start processing of the sequencing of the jobs. So for that, you need to firstly find the minimum processing time of the jobs irrespective of the machines. So here you can see the minimum processing time is two which is corresponding to job two. So that means we will allocate job two on machine B. And at the side of machine B, we will write two. Then we will cancel out the job number two because once it is assigned, we don't need to assign it on the other machine. Now next minimum processing time is, you can see three and three is two times. So which three you need to opt? So in this case, we have to give priority to first machine. So that means we need to take the first three, which is corresponding to job one. So we are leaving the second three and we are opting the first three corresponding to job one and we are allocating job one on machine one. So that is why in the grid at the side of machine A, we will write job one and we will cancel out job one. Now further, Again, we need to find the next minimum time and that is three, which is corresponding to job four. So now this time we are allocating job four on machine B like this. And then we can delete the job four. Now next minimum processing time is four. Again, four is occurring two times. So, so the rule is we have to give priority to the first machine. So we are taking the first four and leaving the next one. So which is corresponding to job three. So we are allocating job three on machine A and at the side of machine A in the grid after one, we will write three and then we are deleting the job three. Now the next and the last remaining job is job five. So we do not need to consider any processing time now because this is the last job and in the grid, also, there is only one vacant place. So directly we will put job five in the grid. So this way we are getting the sequence of the jobs. Now, after getting the sequence of the jobs, we, we have to proceed for the getting the total elapsed time, idle time on machine A and idle time on machine B. So for that, we need to calculate in time and out time on both the machines. So in the Johnson's rule, the Assumption is both the machine will start at the same time and also they will close at the same time. So that is the main 
important assumption which you need to remember so this is the most important assumption of johnson's rule which you need to remember so when we are coming here in the second table you can see we have to find in time and out time for both the machines so firstly when i'm talking about machine a so here for the first job in time we will set as zero because both the machines will start at the same time so we are assuming at the zeroth time or at the zeroth minute the machine a will take first job so that is why the in time for job number 1 on machine a would be zero and then out time would be the uh, in time plus the processing time of job 1 on machine a so that is 0 plus 3 3 would be the out time then this 3 would become the in time for the next job on same machine that is for third job the in time on machine a would be 3 now and then out time would be in time plus the processing time that is 3 plus 4 7 then 7 would be in time then 7 plus 7 14 would be out time then 14 would be in time and 14 plus 5 19 would be the out time then 19 would be the in time and 19 plus 7 26 would be the out time so this way we have calculated in time and out time here now we need to go for machine b and again we need to calculate in and out time for all the five jobs so for the first job in time would be 3 because as i have told you both the machines will start at the same time so once the machine a will complete any job that that will pass it on to the machine b so first job will be completed at the third minute so at the third minute that job will be pass it on to the machine b so this way for job 1 in time on machine b would be 3 now out time would be the in time plus the processing time so that is 3 plus 6 9 then now for calculating the out time for the remaining jobs on machine b there is a rule and the rule is you have to compare the out time and on the first machine and on the second machine both now so what is the rule you need to see that if the out time on second machine of the previous job is greater than out time on first machine of the present job if this condition is there so we will take the out time on the second machine as as the in time for the present job so here we are making comparison you can see the out time on the second machine is 9 for the previous job and out time of the same job on the first machine is 7 so we make we can make comparison between these 9 and 7 and we can see 9 is greater than 7 so that is why we are keeping 9 as a in time for job number 3 on machine b and then the out time would be the 9 plus 7 that is the 16 would be the out time now again we need to make comparison between 16 and 14 so 16 is greater than so we are keeping 16 here then 16 plus 4 20 would be the out time for the job number 5 then 20 and 19 we need to make comparison in these two so 20 is greater than so we are keeping 20 here and then 20 plus 3 23 would be the 23 would be the out time now we need to make comparison between 26 and 23 so we can say 26 is greater than 23 so rather than keeping 23 this time we are keeping 26 and the log again i am discussing one logic here that once the machine a will complete any task only then it will pass it on to the next machine so at the 26th machine the job number 2 will be completed by machine a so it will be further pass it on to the machine b and machine b will be free at the 23rd minute after completing the job number 4 but until and un unless the next job will not come on the machine b it will not be able to process it so that is why 26th minute will be the in time for job number 2 on machine b and its processing time is 2 so 28 would be the out time 
so the, this way we will calculate in time and out time on both the machines now we will proceed further to calculate the total elapsed time idle time on machine a and idle time on machine b so here as again i am repeating the assumption that both the machines will start at the same time and also they will close at the same time so that is why the last jobs out time on the last machine or the, on the second machine would be the total elapsed time that that is 28 would be the total elapsed time so the other name for elapsed time are total completion time and total make span time so this way this total elapsed time would be the 28 now further we will calculate the idle time for machine a so the idle time for machine a would be the difference of the out time of the last job on the second machine and the last job on the first machine so that is 28 minus 26 this would be the 2 so 2 would be the idle time for machine a now idle time for machine b so the according to assumption both the machines will start at the same time but machine b is getting its first job at the third minute so till third minute the machine b was the idle so that is why this three and next one is we need to make comparison between this in and out time so if there is any difference that will also become the idle time so here you can see there is one difference exist that is in between 26 and 23 and the difference is 3 so now this 3 plus 3 6 would be the idle time for machine b so friends this way we have calculated the total elapsed time idle time on machine a and idle time on machine b after getting the optimal sequence of the jobs with the help of johnson's rule for the case n jobs to machine So thank you friends for watching this video I hope this video will helpful for you to understand the sequencing of the jobs and the case would be n jobs to machine please subscribe my channel dr chanchal jain like share and comment on my videos happy learning to all thank you so much